Hello and welcome to another video review. This is One Must Fall Battlegrounds for PC. This is a 3D fighting game developed by Diversions Entertainment and co-published by Diversions Publishing and Tri-Synergy Inc. in 2003. And it's fairly interesting for a couple of reasons, the first of which being that it's the sequel after seven years to One Must Fall 2097, which, I mean, that's a pretty big deal right there because One Must Fall 2097 was both a very good game and a very popular PC exclusive fighting game. So when this thing came out, it was a PC exclusive fighting game and people were like, ooh, a PC exclusive fighting game. And it's a sequel to One Must Fall 2097. Gotta check this out. We were pretty eagerly awaiting a sequel after 2097 because, well, let's face it, it was a really fun game. And so when this thing came out and it got a very, very mixed reception, that's definitely enough to give you pause. So, the real question here is, how did this thing turn out, and why is it that it's effectively forgotten after all this time, but 2097 still has a pretty dedicated fan base? Well, as far as presentation goes, it's definitely a product of its time. Like I said, it came out in 2003, and it had about average visuals for the time, but there are still some effects in there that actually look pretty nice. Namely, the shiny nature of the robots. They, they definitely look like they have this nice polished sheen to them. And the texture work itself is generally pretty good, actually, even looking back on it. Obviously, the modeling is a bit jagged, and the animations are especially janky. They weren't even all that good when the game came out. It was pretty janky animations then, and it's even jankier now. So... Those have especially not aged all that well. And the interface looks extremely amateurish. So you do have that particular problem with it as well. At least once you get into the game, the heads-up display and everything like that looks extremely amateurish. While the actual menus that you're navigating, for example, like the single-player menu or the uh, options menu and things like that, actually look fairly professional. It's just this kind of weird dichotomy between them. And... Ultimately, the visuals just end up not impressing all that much, even though they do have quite a few particle effects and things like that. And it's partly due to the fact that this game is buggy as hell. Even when it came out, it was ridiculously buggy, and the years have not been kind to it. For example, you may have seen my How to Fail video on this, and I'm going to show you a bit of a clip that I took off from that, which is... What happens when the game actually throws you into it at the very beginning? When you start the game up, it throws you directly into a tutorial without letting you fiddle with the visual settings. And there's a particular visual setting called Glow, which on certain systems, mainly all modern systems as far as I can tell, screws up the visual rendering. So instead of actually showing the game's graphics with this glow effect, it just shows a white screen with the heads-up display, and you can still move around and everything, but there you can't see what you're doing because everything's just white. It's really weird. If you turn that setting off, then it's fine. It renders everything perfectly fine. But that particular setting, for some weird reason, screws up the renderer. I don't know. But I'll talk more about the big bugs in this game later on when I get to the gameplay. For now, just know that there's a lot of visual glitches and things like that that can be problematic. As far as the sound design goes, on the other hand, it's mostly decent. I mean, it's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination. The sound effects work pretty well for the most part. You have these nice clang sounds, but they do sound a bit generic at times. And even worse, there is barely any variety to them, so you're going to hear the exact same clanging sounds and such like that over and over and over again, it does get kind of tiring. And then there's the soundtrack, which is pretty decent for the most part, I mean, the main theme from One Must Fall 2097 has been remixed here for the main menu, but the actual in-game fighting music is just kind of this fast-paced electronic music that works okay, but ultimately isn't all that memorable. And I have actually seen it compared to the Amiga demo scene, so if you're familiar with that or you were a part of that, then it might be familiar to you, but I wasn't involved in that, so I couldn't tell you exactly. Amiga wasn't really popular where I am, so I never really got involved with Amigas, so I can't really comment too much on that. But all in all, the sound design is alright, and the visuals are 
like I said, average for their time, and some parts have aged better than others, but they've definitely still aged, and the game does look dated now. What absolutely really matter here are the story and the gameplay, and there's basically no story in this game whatsoever. Oh, don't get me wrong, there are campaigns, and they're basically the effective story mode in this game, but they have basically no plot. I mean, the only one that I've actually encountered thus far that has actually had a proper plot to it is Raven's Redemption, and quite literally all that is is Raven was defeated in the North American Open Tournament, and now he wants to redeem himself by beating a really powerful opponent. That's it. And that's actually what you're seeing right now. It has basically no plot to it whatsoever, and when you're actually going through the various tournaments, you do get bits and pieces here and there, but it never really stitches everything together, and you're just left wondering what any of the things that people are saying are. For example, the Iron Fist. The game never explains what that is, even though it constantly references it and is acting like it's this big bad thing. Well, we have no idea what it is. You didn't give us any plot, game, so we have no freaking clue what's going on. The only real plot that matters, so to speak, is that we're going through tournaments in order to become the best fighter in the world, so to speak. That's pretty much it. And you start off with the North American Open Tournament, and that unlocks the Ultimate Warrior Tournament, which is eventually going to unlock the World Cup, if you somehow manage to beat the Ultimate Warrior Tournament. You see, this brings up some gameplay problems. And let me go into the actual gameplay, because let's face it, if there's no plot, then it doesn't really matter all that much. So, how is the gameplay? Well, if you've played One Must Fall 2097, this is going to feel radically different to you. Partly because it's a 3D fighting game, so obviously it's just going to be a lot different. But, you're going to notice something right off the bat that is going to strike you the wrong way. And that is how incredibly clunky it feels to actually control your robot. You see, not only is it a 3D fighting game, but the controls are keyboard only, and I can't change them, because if I try to change them, the game crashes. I'm not joking. I wish I was joking. The game crashes whenever I try to rebind the keys. You see, when I said this game is ridiculously buggy, I mean it. And it's not just things like the trying to rebind keys crashing the, the game. No, 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 no. The escape key doesn't work. At least it doesn't if you're on Windows Vista or higher. You see, apparently Microsoft changed something with the way the keyboard is interpreted when they went to Windows Vista, and the developers knew this was a problem and never fixed it. They just said, no, nah, we're not going to fix it, and they never did. So to actually be able to go to the main menu, you actually have to Alt-Tab, go to your task manager, and end the game. Basic functionality has been lost. It's really sad, actually. But it's not just that. Even when I was playing this thing on an XP machine, the controls just feel incredibly clunky. Moving around just feels sluggish and awkward, and turning is all done via the directional keys, which means that it's going to be very, very imprecise. And what that means in the span of this 3D game is that you're going to constantly miss. Because the strikes are actually pretty targeted. They're not actually kind of broad strokes like you would kind of expect. You see, if you've played a proper 3D fighting game that actually, well, was developed competently, you would know that the way it maneuvers has to be very, very precise. For example, if you play Soul Calibur, that is the way to do a 3D fighting game right. It feels responsive. It feels like you have precision and control. This game does not. So even though you still have this kind of freeform combo system like you did with the original One Must Fall 2097, and even though you still have the same kind of special moves, although some of the uh, key binds have changed, for example, the Concussion Cannon is now back forward uh, punch instead of going on the 2D plane, so you're going to have to get used to things like that. But 
even though the, the control scheme is fairly similar, it just feels completely different, and not in a good way. It also really doesn't help that you're going to notice something else in this video. You're going to notice my attacks tend to either ghost through enemies, or it's extremely hard to actually judge distance with them. The way they've set up the camera angle, it's really more like a third person action game or a third person shooter than a fighting game. And what ends up happening as a result is that you don't actually have a lot of spatial awareness. You really can't figure out what you're doing half the time, so you just kind of mash buttons and hope it works. So when you get to the higher level tournaments, you find that the game becomes extremely difficult extremely quickly. But that's not the worst thing this game does. The absolute worst thing it does is that it outright cheats. And it tells you it's cheating. And in so doing, it basically is telling you, yeah, we're cheating. What the hell are you going to do about it, punk? And so while you're sitting there trying to play fair, the game is basically extending its middle finger to you the entire time and laughing maniacally as you get your ass handed to you. It's to the point where I can't play this thing on any higher level than veteran. And even when I get to veteran, I cannot beat the Ultimate Warrior Tournament, which is only the second tournament. It is ridiculous. And even if you try to go technique over just raw, just button mash and hope th for the best, you're not going to have a good time because the game is still cheating and it's still going to be like, no, you're not going to have anything that works. For example, I try to counter. Sometimes it works, other times it doesn't. Sometimes I can grapple, sometimes I can't. It's just a complete crapshoot. I don't know whether it's just the hit detection is terrible, because it seems like it is, or what? Because it's just completely ridiculous. You get your ass handed to you incredibly easily. Now this may sound like me just complaining and I'm just like, oh, DW is just not good at the game. I don't know how you can get good at this game. It's just ultimately way too clunky to be able to actually get any sort of skill with it. And you're really more just exploiting the game's AI and things like that than actually being able to be good at the game. And it really doesn't help that if you wanted to play multiplayer, you can't. Nobody's playing this thing. And even if they were, it uses GameSpy, which means that you can't actually play it. Not unless you try the direct connect method. And I don't know anybody else who owns this game. Not a single person. So that should tell you something right off the bat. And what you're left with here is a fighting game that is a complete mess from just the technical problems, which are ridiculous, I might add. Even though the game runs fine for the most part on the modern hardware, when this thing came out, it just brought PCs to their knees because the system requirements were actually a hell of a lot lower than was actually required to run the game well. I tried running this thing on a Celeron D 2.66 GHz with a gig of RAM and a Radeon 9250, which is way higher than the system requirements, which are a 733 megahertz processor, 128 megabytes of RAM, and a 3D accelerator card with 16 megabytes of VRAM. A Radeon 9250 is 256 megabytes of VRAM, and that computer ran this thing like crap. And hell, even when I'm playing this thing, on the modern beast rig, I'm really not going much higher than 60 frames a second. Even in things like Crisis 3, I would go into the hundreds. Hell, even in Witcher 3, I've had hundred and higher frame rates at times. This thing never goes above 75, and it's a game from 2003. It's frankly just amazing how borked this game actually is. It's a complete mess. While it did have plenty of potential, what you're left with is a game that does nothing right. Literally nothing. And the things it doesn't do outright wrong, it only does at a mediocre level. For example, there's a stat system in this game. I have no idea how much it actually affects the gameplay because I've played several different characters and it doesn't feel any different. And even though they have wildly different stats, I usually just go with the guy who has fairly middle of the road stats and go from there. And I don't seem to have any difficulties compared to other characters, so 
I don't know what's going on. It seems like more of a cosmetic choice than anything else. And even the game modes are nothing particularly special. You got your standard beat the enemy and you go on to the next round until you've won two rounds and thus you win the match. And you've got a point battle mode where you're battling it out for points of damage and whoever has the most points of damage that they've dished out at the end of the round wins the match. And that's kind of it actually. Even the stage weapons and stage traps are not all that interesting and don't do all that much damage. They're just more annoying than anything else. And that's what ultimately sums this game up. When it isn't being annoying, it's outright infuriating. And thus it stands to reason why this game was forgotten. And even One Must Fall fans don't acknowledge its existence half the time. I give it a 1.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching.